Hello, statisticians. Mr. Young Saber here from Skew the Script. Today, we're going to look at a famous moment in baseball known as the Marlins Miracle. And we're going to discover a potential secret moment of that miracle using some work with normal curves. Let's skew it. Today, we're going to learn more about normal curves. This is lesson 2.4 in our course sequence. In order to understand the moment known as the Marlins Miracle, we first need to learn about this man, Jose Fernandez. He grew up in Cuba, where he described playing baseball in poverty with sticks and rocks as a child. And after three failed attempts, he was able to defect from Cuba successfully traveling on a boat to the United States. On that last journey, he famously saved his mother from drowning on the perilous seas. With this inspiring background story, he was wildly successful in the United States. He became the best pitcher on the Miami Marlins. He was known throughout Major League Baseball for his cheery attitude and he was wildly popular among the Cuban-American fan base in Miami, partly because of his prowess on the field and partly because of his background story. But then, unfortunately, in 2016, tragedy struck. Fernandez died in a boating accident off the coast of Miami at the age of 24. This tragedy sent shockwaves throughout baseball, his team, and the city. On September 26th, the day after this tragedy, the Marlins were scheduled to play a game against the New York Mets. And here are some scenes from the field that day. The start of a very long and difficult day in Miami for Marlins fans, even for Met fans, for baseball fans. Marlins Park. This about three hours ago, D. Gordon with Jose's glove and Jose Fernandez's cap and a baseball. Tonight, the Marlins will play a baseball game. Just 36 hours from learning that they had lost their ace. I don't know how they're going to do it, but the Miami Marlins are going to play a baseball game against the Mets tonight. I was especially struck by the poignancy of the national anthem, a song we hear every day. But for a young man who risked everything to be a part of this country, it rang especially true today. So the mood at the game was a somber one, but by the time the game was over, it became an inspiring story known as the Marlins miracle. Here's what happened. D. Gordon, one of Fernandez's best friends, was the first batter for the Miami Marlins. He had not hit a home run all season over 300 bats, and he stepped up to the plate, first batter of the game, and did this. Gordon has started to look like the D. Gordon of last year. Gordon to right, it's deep, and it's gone! D. Gordon has hit it out, and the Marlins have a 1-0 lead. That special home run and that special moment became known as the Miami Marlins miracle. There was headlines about it from across the United States about D. Gordon's miraculous heroic home run. But I want to propose there's also another potential hero in the story, a hero that may be revealed through the study of statistics. And that hero is this guy, Bartolo Colon, the pitcher at that at-bat to D. Gordon. So today's key analysis is, what role did the pitcher play in making the Miami Marlins miracle. If you'd like to follow along using guide notes, you can print them up at this URL. 
So let's talk about different normal calculations that relate to this pitcher, Bartolo Colon. At the time, he was 46 years old. He was loved by fans, players, basically everyone who interacted with him. And he used his nickname with himself. He called himself Big Sexy. And there's a reason for that. At the age of 46, he'd do things on the baseball diamond like this. Four. He's just keeping the ball away from Borg. The whole game, he wants to get it. There, ball. Behind the back, flip, and he got him. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's so easy for Cologne right now that he's able to put some mustard on it. Oh, my gosh. Look at that bag of tricks. This man will live forever. Like Bob Cousy. <laughs> it's almost as old as Cousy. <laughs> He's smiling. He knew it. <laughs> Unbelievable. So clearly, at 46 years old, he still had a lot of grace and skill on the baseball diamond. And also, one thing to know is that he still, as a pitcher, threw very fast. Among his first inning fastballs that he threw in that 2016 season, the average speed was 89.4 miles per hour. To put that in context, the fastest speed limit for cars in the United States, in my home state of Texas, is only 85 miles per hour. And if you're watching an 89.4 mile per hour pitch and you're a batter, you only have about 0.5, a little bit less than that, seconds to react to the pitch. You have about half a second. So... It turns out that you can model most of the pitches they threw and their speeds using a normal curve. Among the first inning fastballs he threw in that 2016 season, they were normally distributed with a mean of 89.4 miles per hour and with a standard deviation in speeds of about 1.7 miles per hour. And so this means that about 68% of his pitches were between 87.7 and 91.1 miles per hour, 95% were between these speeds. And 99.7% were between these speeds, and they're pretty symmetrically distributed around that mean of 89.4 miles per hour. So good fastballs in the major leagues are about 92 miles per hour or faster. So we can ask at the age of 46, what percent of Bartolo Colon's pitches were 92 miles per hour or faster? As always, remember our strategy for normal curve problems. Draw and label the curve, perform your calculations while showing work, and answer the question with context. So what percent of his pitches were at least 92 miles per hour? First, we're going to draw that normal curve and we're going to label it. So we've labeled the parameters, mean standard deviation. We said it's normally distributed. It is a bell curve centered at 89.4, and we've labeled the axis of pitch speed and miles per hour. Next, we're going to model what this problem is asking us, at least 92 miles per hour. So this means that the least speed, the least it can be is 92. So it's 92 miles per hour or higher. So we're going to shade in that area on our curve. And we're asking what percent of his pitches fall in that zone. So now we're going to try and calculate this. But here's the thing. 92 miles per hour is in between those standard deviation hash marks. So what do we do here? This is a bit confusing. We can't just use our empirical rule. When you're between standard deviations, I want you to do this. One, find the z-score, and two, use table A. So one standard deviation above the mean in his pitches gets you at 91.1 miles per hour. If you go two standard deviations above the mean in his pitches, you get to 92.8 miles per hour. So 92 miles per hour is somewhere between one to two standard deviations above the mean in terms of pitch speeds. So to find out exactly how many standard deviations above the mean, we need to find the z-score. Recall that the z-score is modeled by the data minus the mean over the standard deviation and tells you exactly how many standard deviations above and below the mean you are. The numerator here, the data value minus the mean, is your distance from the mean in raw units, and we're dividing by the standard deviation to scale it in terms of standard deviation units. So the data value we're looking at here is 92 miles per hour. We're going to plug in the mean and standard deviation of our normal curve. When we subtract the numerator values, we get 2.6. This means that a 92 mile per hour pitch is 2.6 miles per hour above his mean. And we're going to divide it by that standard deviation 1.7. So what's 2.6 in terms of standard deviations? It is, when you divide those, 1.53. So we know that a 92 mile per hour pitch is 1.53 standard deviations above the mean. That's its z-score. So 1.53. What percent of pitches in any normal curve would be above 1.53 sigma above the mean? So what we can do here is look at a table, a very special table we have in stats known as table A. It's in your AP stats formula sheet, and it models z-scores and normal curve probabilities and areas. 
and it always shows the percent of data below a z-score on a normal curve. So here's what that table looks like. And we're going to look for a z-score of 1.53. The z's are listed in the left column. So I see that there are two digits here, the ones and the tenths. So I see that 1.5 is the closest to the z-score I'm looking for, 1.53. And then I have that last digit, the three, and the hundredths are at the top here. So that's 0.03. So we have 1.5 and 0.03. I'm going to go ahead and trace those down, and you can see they collide at this area of 0.937. So a z-score of 1.53 has 93.7% of the data below it in a normal curve. So if we put that on our plot, we can see that below 92 miles per hour, below 1.53 standard deviations above the mean, we have 93.7% of our data. The table showed us that, just a one-to-one -one connection between the z-score and the area below the curve. So the thing is, though, we wanted to find this, the area above the curve. It was at least 92. So it was 92 and above. And so to do this, all we have to do is do 100 minus the area below, because the area below plus the area above gets you 100. So 100 minus 93.7 gives you 6.3%. So this makes some sense, right? Because if you're two standard deviations out, you've covered 95% of the data, leaving 2.5% in each tail. So if you're only 1.53 standard deviations out, it's not quite two standard deviations out, you're gonna have a little bit more left in your tail. So you have about 6.3% left in the tail. So finally, we have to answer the question in context, 6.3% of our total Collins pitches were at least 92 miles per hour. So at the age of 46, Bartolo Colon was throwing 92 mile per hour or higher fastballs 6.3% of the time. That's not nothing. That's very impressive. We can also ask at his advanced age, what were the speeds of some of his slowest fastballs? So let's talk about that. Specifically, what speed is at the fifth percentile of his pitches? That means that we need to find a speed that is above only 5%. About 5% of the data is below this pitch speed. So let's draw our curve and we can see here that we're gonna label 5% at the bottom. We need to find a pitch speed, this question mark here, below which we have 5% of our data. So it's gonna be on the left side, leaving just a little bit in that tail. And we're given that we have 5% below our data value and we need to find that data value. When you're in this situation, I want you to use this strategy. You're gonna to go to table A and instead of starting with a Z-score, you're gonna start with the areas you're gonna try and find a z-score that results in an area of 0.05 below it. So the areas are the numbers in the middle of the table. So I'm gonna scan, okay, this area is 0.003, not enough, keep scanning, keep scanning, this area is 0 0.0021, we're looking for 0.05, 5%, so not enough. Keep on going, keep on going, boom. Here, we finally hit a number close to 5%, 0.050. So that's very close to 0 0.05, the area that we're looking for. So what we can do is trace this back to the z-score it's associated with, and we see we have negative 1.6 and 0.04. So that means it relates to a z-score of negative 1.64. So in order to get 5% of area below, we need to travel 1.64 standard deviations below the mean. So now we can ask what pitch speed is 1.64 standard deviations below the mean? Well, remember the z-score is going according to this formula and we have most of the ingredients in this formula. We need to find the data value. And if we represent the z-score symbolically, it looks like this. So x1 is the data value, mu is the mean, sigma is the standard deviation. We can plug in everything we know. We know the z-score, we know the mean, we know the standard deviation. We plug in all those and we need to solve for the data value, miles per hour pitch speed. So note that we're dividing by 1.7 on the right side to cancel that division. We can multiply the opposite divisions multiplication. So you multiply, that 1.7 will cancel. We simplify the left side, we get this. Then to solve the right side, we gotta get rid of that subtraction of 89.4. So we can add 89.4 to both sides. And finally, we solve it out. So we see that this uh, 1.64 standard deviation below the mean is 86.6 miles per hour. So this means that 86.6 miles per hour is at the fifth percentile's pitch speeds. 5% of pitches will be below 86.6 miles per hour. So an 86.6 miles per hour pitch is an unusually slow speed for him. Only 5% of pitches are going to be below that speed. So it's a pretty unusually slow speed for him. Now, I want you to watch the video clip again of this home run. And I want you to look in this box where it's going to show the miles per hour of the pitch he threw to D. Gordon. Of last year. Gordon to right. It's deep. And it's gone. D. Gordon. So that brings us to our discussion question for today. 
Here's a chart of all the pitches that Bartolo Colon threw to D. Gordon in the 2016 season and their results. Now note, pitches near the middle of this strike zone of the plate are the easiest to hit. And this was the pitch that was thrown to D. Gordon on the Miami Marlins Miracle Day. Um, and note that that pitch, as you saw in the video, was close to 85 miles per hour. It was 85.7 miles per hour. So in a post-game interview, Colon was asked if he purposely threw an easy pitch one right down the middle, and one that was slower than typical for him. When he was asked that question, he ended the interview abruptly and politely just went home, never spoke about it again. So the discussion question is, do you think Cologne purposely threw an easy pitch to D. Gordon to make the Marlins miracle happen? I want you to justify your answer using a normal curve calculation. That's it for today's statisticians. We'll see you in class.